Bap, bap, bap. We're just gonna jump right in with Ms. Pat. Question, um, are nosebleeds a part of being pregnant? Can you explain my nosebleeds? No. Whatever. <laughs> you have no bleed? Why is my nose bleed? I don't think I've ever had a nosebleed in my life. Oh, wow. Well, you, were, you were saying your lips are very chapped, so it just couldn't really be you dry. It just could be like I had, because I'm hot all night. I'm like, and I turn the AC on. It could just be that. Yeah, you probably just dry. Is this normal, Pat? My nose is bleed. I've never had a nosebleed in my life. Am I? When did I become that dork? Well, I had a no bleed because I got punched in it. So I, it wasn't doing pregnancy. <laughs> when, when did you get punched? I, plenty of time. Brothers, friends. It, it, somebody slapped me quite a few times coming up. I mean, I can't think of a braver person than someone that would. I believe I believe you. I punched the fuck back. Okay. Oh, uh, Miss Pat is here. So um, you have a new show. Uh, Miss Pat settles it. Yes. Uh, my Pat, will you say what you said when you saw this poster? I said, that looks like the perfect television show. <laughs> I mean, I can't <laughs> think of a show that I want to watch more just based on the poster. So this is like you uh, like settling court cases? Yeah, real cases, real families, real situations uh, for BET. If, and you know what? I, I came up with this idea and I took it, started talking to the network about it. And I didn't want myself in it. I wanted somebody else. And he's like, why don't you, why don't you do it? No. And I'm like, I'm a convicted felon. I, I, I don't think I could be a judge. <laughs> and they was like, it's TV. You can be Jesus. <laughs> so I was like, okay, I'll give it a try. And, you know, at the time we shoot, everybody's on strike. You, you can only do non-stripted. And everything just came up, came out. I mean, I can't, there, you're the only person whose opinion I respect at this point. Like, I, it, truly, like, I cannot wait. What was like, were there any that like stand out as being particularly memorable? Uh, it was quite a few of them that stood out. One was this guy suing his best friend uh, for a dog. He was gay, so he would go off on the weekend and get with his boo and just abandon his dog. So the, his friend changed her name to Maya Angelo. And the guy brought her in and wanted the damn wanted the dog back. That's what he said. So I gave him the dog, but he really didn't want the dog. He wanted the money. So he was so shocked when he won. Uh, so I'm like, uh, but you sued him for the dog. He's like, uh, I really didn't want the dog. <laughs> people are so wild. So I don't know if you've had this like since you've gotten like really famous on television. Have you had people come out of the woodwork and like, you know, try to sue or like neighbors try to pull weird stuff on you. Like, for example, like when I first started getting billboards for a television show, this must have been 13 years ago, all of a sudden, I my accountant calls me because I'd had an accountant that just did my taxes and said, you're being sued in small claims court. And I'm like, what? Like, what could I get sued for? And he's like, don't worry. This is just a racket that people do when they see you on a billboard. They'll say something like this guy, he was a cab driver who said she hit my cab. What and they bank on the fact that it's small claims, and if you don't show up, because they assume you're just too busy, because you're on a TV show, you're working, you probably have the money. It's six thousand dollars, and if you don't show up, usually it just goes to the other person. So it's like a it's a good racket. Like I wish I had known about it. Like when I was broke, <laughs> like I would have been like, oh, that's really smart. Just sue a person that you think is like famous and busy in small claims. They won't hear about it. They won't get the summons. They won't show up because they're busy. And he scheduled it on. Christmas Eve on um, the 24th when normally people are out of town. But what this motherfucker didn't know is that I don't have a family. I don't have plans on Christmas Eve. I'm at the comedy store normally. I'm like $6,000 is a lot of money. I'm going. I'm going to show up. He sues me for hitting his cab. I go. I get there. He's like with his friends hanging out, kind of laughing. I think this is something that they just did. I sat through a full day of small claims. It was so fascinating. The case before mine was a guy who was suing another man for stealing his bull semen. Like he had a prize bull mm -hmm. and, <laughs> and he was accusing the other guy of coming jerking off his bull, taking the semen to go breed it. I was like, I, I'm, I just want to be in court all day watching crazy people. So what happened with your case? My case, I ended up winning because he just thought I wasn't going to show up. And I was able to prove this is where I was the day that he accused me. There's no way I could have hit his cab here. But if I hadn't showed up because I was some Hollywood asshole who just like, didn't care or was too busy or... You know, it's it's weird that you said it because I just had somebody sue me in for small claim courts and say they fell on my property and they never worked for me. See? So, and it's in some... I called and I was like, I don't know these people. Mm -hmm. So, 
I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. So now I'm going to go home and dig in. And I think the court date is at the end of November. That's probably what they're doing. So end of November, Thanksgiving, they know you have a family. They know you're going to be hanging out with your family. But can't you counter, Sue, if you don't show up because you don't know anything about that case? Yeah, but then you're also, I think a lot of these people bank on the fact that suing someone's a hassle. It's going to cost you money to sue them back. You're busy. You're making money. You're on a hit show. You're touring. They might look at your tour dates and go, oh, she's in Tallahassee this day. So I'm going to go to take her to court that day if she doesn't show up, the, the judge is going to go, oh, well, this Hollywood asshole, Miss Pat's too busy to show up for the court case. It's probably, she's probably guilty or whatever, you know, like, and it'll just default to that person. And small claims, it's like five, $6,000. You walk away with five grand. Where are they going to get it from? That's a good point. I guess you'd have to pay it. I mean, do they just go in your account? No, I guess they would just send you, and then it would go to, I guess, collections or something if you didn't pay it. Mm. You know, or maybe if you work for the, oh, they could also take it out of your paycheck if you work for the state, maybe. But I don't know. He, My business, my uh, accountant at the time said, just pay this. Just like give him the $6,000. Like it's not. And I was like, no, dude, that's a lot of money to me right now. You know, like I was making money, but I still had a whole family support and I couldn't deal with that. I, I was like, I'm not going to set a precedent that people can just take advantage like this. This is, you know, but yeah, that's a big thing. I mean, people like I fell on your property. I was never on your property. You can. I don't even know these people. Yeah, you can prove. So you know, you could also have someone go in your place. Like I think you can kind of send a lawyer to go for you. I wanted to go. I was like, I wanted to look. I'm at, gonna go too. I wanted to look at this guy in the eye and just be like, you f like picked the wrong bitch on the wrong day. Like I'm sorry that you're in your circumstances that this is what you have to do for money or whatever. But I showed up. He had like a fancy belt buckle. He didn't even recognize you. When, as soon as I came in, he knew it was me because I introduced myself. I was like, hi, I'm the person that didn't hit your cab. What's up? And he had his friends there. I think they like make a day of it. Like they just, you sue people and just like celebrities and like assume they're not going to show up. And then when you're in court, you're going like, oh, I sued Miss Pat. I slipped and fell on her property. She didn't even have the decency to show up, respect to show up. This is the kind of person she is. You know, if she showed up, like, you know, I would love Ooh. to hear the evidence that I'm wrong, but she's not here. Here's the proof. Here are the photos. Today you can Photoshop anything. You can fake any kind of email, any kind of claim. I went to the doctor. Here's my, you know, doctor's note. Here's the, you know, Oxycontin I took. Here's my x-ray, like whatever. And then we'll probably make a convincing argument. And, you know, judges are like, just want to move through their day. So they're gonna be like, all right, what's six grand to Miss Pat? Nothing. Six grand is a lot to Miss Pat because I, I will take all my money out of my account mm -hmm. and put it in my titty. You That's would right. not get anything uh -uh. from me. <laughs> you would not because uh -uh. I don't even fucking know you. Mm -mm. That's wild. Hired a lawyer. You got like a like a, a lawyer and everything. They got no. I just I just called and I said I don't know what these people are talking about. I've never done this. I don't know what are you talking about. Uh uh. No, because they would have, yeah, I had to get the employee insurance in case someone did fall on my property or something. Well, I already have that, but that person never worked for me. That's insane. So I think they just drove by and said, I'm going to say I'm going to fail over here. What, bitch, I'm the contractor. Mm -mm. So where did you fall at? <laughs> Nowhere. Oh, try to say it was one of the workers? Was yes. Of, oh, wow. No, it was not. No. Well, also, if you're a worker and you were doing work on it, if it was- I'm at my house every day. If it was if wet, you would have gotten it wet. <laughs> Yes. I mean, but I was always at my house, so nobody ever fell at my property. I'm literally, if I'm not home, my husband is there. Mm -hmm. I'm the general contractor for my house. Yes, and they should have said something to you if they did. Nobody ever fell. I'm there eating lunch watching them. For one, I don't want them to steal my wood. For two, I don't want them to steal anything. For three, I just want to make sure the shit is done right, so right. I stay at my property at all times. If you get work done on your house, you got to, like, a hawk. You got to just be there. Yeah, because contractors will piss on your flow. They'll do anything. Mm -hmm. So I'm we always at my property. Yeah, yeah. And it's also, it's like... You know, it's like we're all human. Like, I get, you know, it's like desperate. It's a desperate time right now. You know what I mean? And people are doing desperate. It ain't no desperate time. There's some lazy fuckers out here. <laughs> ain't no damn desperate time. If, if, how is it desperate times when you can sell pussy on the internet? I mean, <laughs> when I was selling pussy, it was on VCR tapes. You had to mail them. You had to wait seven days to get your payment. <laughs> I mean, you had to edit them. It's no work to this shit now. It's not desperate time. The rewind. Yes. It's so many ways to make money now by sitting at home at doing absolutely nothing. No, it's not desperate time. It's lazy ass people. It's so true. And it's also, it's tricky. It's like the easier things get, the lazier people get. I yes. feel like things have never been easier and all people do is complain about how hard it is. Exactly. Lazy fuckers. Yeah. But I'm going to go dig out that court date soon when we finish this shit. Uh, yeah. Like, I don't. <laughs> I was like, I will make time. I should showed up on Christmas Eve 
I, I'm, I'm, I, I know it's this month. I was just talking to my husband. I said, I'm going to drive down to this shitty ass court day mm -hmm. and see who is this suing me because I don't know this person. Good. And then you're going to show up and they're going to get all spooked and then they're not going to have a case and you're going to go in and just like make it clear. Like if you just go in with a list of the workers that were on your property or whatever, that's it. And then they dismiss it. Okay. And then it goes on that person's record that they had some frivolous lawsuit. Because that was the other thing. I was like, I don't want this person going to do this to other people too. You know what I mean? Because like a lot of people think that just because you're on TV, you're rich. No, I'm no. not. Yeah, look at me. I'm not. <laughs> Looking right down I'm the fucking, panel. I'm not rich. I wish I was rich. <laughs> and I'm not on a major network, so you know I'm not fucking rich. <laughs> BETM. I'm okay. <laughs> Even if I was on one, I'm still just okay. So I am having a kid pivoting hard here. You're the only person whose parenting advice I want. <laughs> <laughs> Am I allowed? This is a big, and you're now a judge on a big TV show. Am I allowed to pinch my child? Pinch? <laughs> okay, so this. Spank, when, slap, <laughs> whip, <laughs> Miley, Miley, shake, tap the head. When, when, I, <laughs> when I was growing up, if you made a fit, if you made like a fuss and threw a fit in a grocery store, there would just be a pinch on the back of your neck and you would be escorted out of the grocery store. I didn't, I don't feel abused by that. It worked perfectly. Like just a little, and I see my friends with their kids and I'm like, I know how to solve this. It's yes. just a little pinch. It just stuns them. Yes. I, 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 please pinch your child. They, Cause there's <laughs> nothing like a badass kid in a public place that's running over their parents. And they're looking at them like, can you please, like we're in public. I'm like, why are you trying to reason with a child that has no concept? Black mother said, I will slap the fucking black off of you. <laughs> you know how many times we heard that? <laughs> make me make you Vigarago. <laughs> Is that what it's called? Vigilago. Vigilago. <laughs> <laughs> Was that a country I just said? <laughs> I thought it was, like, I used to have a skin infection when I was a kid called Impetigo. Impetigo. I've had Impetigo, too. And then I thought she meant, like, Viggo Mortensen because he was really pale. No, was, Michael Jackson. Make me slap you, Michael <laughs> Jackson. Like yes. I'll beat the shit out of you. Don't fucking play with me. <laughs> but don't you feel like people now, they want to be friends with their kids? Like, yes, not, they do. You're I, not your kid's friend. I'm not. I'm never. I had a baby at 14. Everybody know that. So I'm never your fucking kid. My kids are 36, 37 now. And I tell them, don't fucking cuss in front of me. I'll whoop you and your kid's ass. So it's all about respect. You're not going to show out on me. You're not, you're not going to act a fool because you got me fucked up. Uh-huh. I'm just, I'm sorry. I'm not going to sit here and say, we're in public. I'm going to say, I'm going to beat your fucking ass if you don't get up off that floor. <laughs> and I don't give a fuck about going to jail because I've been. <laughs> get the fuck up off that floor. That's all I can say. I'm not going to sit here and reason with you. I don't know that I'm mom. Uh -uh. The next thing you know, you're going to be bossing me around. I said I want a Chick-fil-A today. Bitch, it's Sunday. I... <laughs> I can't get you no fucking Chick-fil-A on no Sunday, so I'm going to stop it now. It's also like what, how much, like what are we doing? Did you go full Santa Claus, full Easter Bunny, the whole thing? Well, Whitney, when I had a kid in the seventh grade, I I, I, uh, I ain't getting no damn criminal toy. <laughs> Me and the kids both was looking for Christmas toys. <laughs> you still believed in Santa Claus at the time. No, I, I you know. Because <laughs> I do, uh, I remember as a kid knowing it was a lie and being like, why are you guys lying to me? Like, well, in the hood, they tell you, ain't no white man brought you shit but a warrant. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm gonna give birth on black, this podcast. Black black people will tell you, ain't no goddamn white man came out by here with shit free. I bought that shit. It was on layaway at Walmart. That's what black parents say. Hopefully that white shit. So they black family killed white Santa Claus a long time ago for us. Oh, what the fuck? You ain't asked that that nigga for nothing. So no, these kids ain't ain't nobody fucking with no white Santa Claus. And then we put him in a black costume. I don't know that nigga. I just want you to get a picture with him. He ain't bought me shit. So black mothers killed. Black parents just killed the shit for us. <laughs> my mom used to say, I don't got no Santa Claus. You know I got my appointment to go down there and pick up them free toys for you niggas. And I ain't, <laughs> and, and I ain't rapping that shit either. I'm going to throw it behind. My mama never rapped that shit. She, <laughs> so, 
Back in the day, we were literally, <laughs> you going to be okay. I'm in labor. I think I'm going into labor. We would have an appointment to go pick up the toys for the po' kids, which was us. And each po' kids got two items. And mama, it was five of us. My mama said, look here, nigga. Y'all pick this shit because I got to get back home and watch the young and rest of it. <laughs> so... <laughs> We would go down the line and pick two of the shittiest items that you could ever see. And she would say, don't you niggas make, pick nothing with noise. I don't want to hear that shit. <laughs> <laughs> so we wouldn't allow, you know them little popcorn things yeah, that make, oh, we got one of them one yeah, she beat the dog shit out of us with it. <laughs> so, so she said, well, don't you get a motherfucking thing that make noise because you know I wake up with a hangover. <laughs> so we would walk down the aisle, we would pick two toys and then she would be at the end of the table and you would put in this black plastic bag and she would tie it up and on Christmas she would throw it in the floor. Y'all get the shit these people gave y'all. <laughs> we already <laughs> seen <laughs> We never had a Christmas tree. It's, I, so I'm a big Christmas person, but yeah. I don't tell the white Santa Claus for life. Because <laughs> I'm black as fuck, but I I like two things I love Disney and I love Christmas. Mm. It just bring that it it makes me feel warm on the inside of a childhood that I never had. So Christmas time, I I probably have up eight Christmas trees. Yeah. It's my favorite fucking I holiday. Nuts. So I I love Christmas, but I don't tell my kids no white man came out here and gave us shit. Now come on now, <laughs> this is 2024. <laughs> 2024. Oh, it's 2023. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. So you know that I've been on tour. You know that I travel a lot. And I'm telling you, these ratchet-ass toothbrushes that that I've been getting at the airport or that I've been getting, like, the ones that just, like, delicately caress your teeth, but they're not actually cleaning them. The point is, I now only use Quip toothbrushes. This is the electric toothbrush, which is timed with sonic vibrations with 30 second pulses to guide a dentist recommended two minute clean. So you're not going to just be like zoning out, missing your window. This just tells you when to move. It's lightweight. It has sleek design for adults and for kids. It's got no wires or bulky chargers to weigh you down or trip you and send you to your, to your death. Okay. A multi-use travel cover that doubles as a mirror mount for less clutter, reusable handles in a range of sleek metal hues, as well as bright plastic colors, sure to pop on your bathroom counter. Skip the batteries, snap into new healthy habits with a new rechargeable electric toothbrush. All the features of the original Quip, but this one has magnetic charge powers up to, for up to three months of brushing. That's crazy. This is the water flosser. Hits all the right spots with gentle, deep, clean pressure at the touch of a button. Extra wide lid that fits right under the faucet and fills up in seconds. The cordless rechargeable battery lasts up to eight weeks with daily use. No bulky charging dock or tangled cords or... God, that stuff drives me nuts. You've got like a rat king of cord nightmares. This blasts away up to 99.9% .9 of plaque and popcorn, by the way, from treated areas with precision thanks to the 360 degree rotating magnetic floss tip that snaps into place, easy to control water flow that leaves you feeling squeaky clean. Look at this, it's sleek and slim enough to keep your countertops as clean as your teeth. $7 replacement floss tips are shipped to you every three months to keep things flowing smoothly and prevent mineral deposits from building up. Gotta love that. And look at this. You guys, uh, Quip makes gum now. Ugh. Mints and gum. Look at this. Every time you pop our new mints, you are going to be caring for your mouth inside and out. Don't be that freak with halitosis. Justin, you know who I'm talking to. Bold mint flavor keeps your breath confidently fresh and you will get a boost of vitamin D gum, which prevents cavities and then freshens breath when chewed for 20 minutes after eating. It's sugar-free. It has tooth-friendly xylitol with zero calories, long-lasting mint flavor, crunchy, Try layer design. Look at this slim travel ready dispenser available in five colors metal or plastic packs. Protects up to 10 pieces of gum or mints at a time. Fits in any purse, any pocket, any cavity that you've got. 
The Quip Electric Toothbrush is loved by over 9 million mouths. Track and improve your brushing with the free Quip app. Earn amazing rewards like free refills products, Target gift cards, and more in addition to the brush heads. Quip also delivers fresh floss, toothpaste, mouthwash, and gum refills every three months for $7. With stylish and affordable electric brushes starting at just $25, you will not be paying through the teeth. Go to getquip.com slash Whitney. Right now, you're going to get 20% off any electric toothbrush brush, mint and gum dispenser, or water flosser. That's your 20% off any electric toothbrush, mint and gum dispenser, or water flosser at getquip.com slash Whitney, spelled get, G-E-T, quip, Q-U-I-P dot com slash Whitney. Quip, the good habits company. I'm just trying to figure out like the, the, the lengths of lying to your kid that's okay. I hate parents who just, just be honest. Just tell them the truth. Like they're, cause they're, they're smarter than we think. I, I see people, I know it's like, infantilizing a child they are whatever children but at the same time it's like i've just been big on i've always treated kids just like adults you know what i mean and then i feel like you know what i, I hate the out. most about parents when they kids when they put their kid in a sports and won't tell them that they suck and they continue to pay for that's them. our biggest problem in america uh so you know and, and everybody on the team got to get a reward no your baby suck no okay he just <laughs> out here because you're trying to get the motherfucker to get some fresh air mm. so tell the truth like my son played basketball my oldest son like he played basketball he was so fucking horrible i said come here <laughs> nigga you wasted 130 dollars. we quit not you we quit <laughs> <laughs> he was like a, a unhinged Dennis Rodman out there. His shoes were still on his feet. He didn't know what to do. He sliding. I said, what the fuck are you doing? This is basketball. Why is you on your stomach? Slide down to the other side of the goal. He was so fucking horrible. And I just put him in the car. Look, look, like, here, yeah, you fucking suck. Okay? And you wasted my money. We're going to stick with football because for some reason, you like niggas hitting you upside your head and you perform better. And he never played basketball again. <laughs> I, I mean, people just should be honest. I mean, unless your child, even like, even if your child is, is I, I don't want to get in trouble for saying this, but my, my friend has an autistic son that I be there. You be talking to him like he just regular, shut your ass down. That's what you can't be talking to him. The autistic like son? <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm not that fucking rude. Maybe they he mean, like, I, so he I, always I, buy his autistic son joints, and he fuck up the joint. Nigga, you fucked up the joint. He's autistic. He don't give a fuck about no str- regular kid. Hey, my kids don't give a fuck about no joints. And I'm like, stop buying him them fucking shoes. He don't care. <laughs> it's gotta be. He finally stopped <laughs> buying uh, buying nice shoes for an autistic son. Well, he stopped buying because he's a joint. Jordan freak. So mm-hmm. he's realized yeah. the, his son don't care about him like he do. Right, right. And so right. I said, just stop. Leave him the fuck alone. I do feel like I don't he's want... He's smart as fuck. Yeah. And so them tennis shoes is not fucking interesting him at all. Get a paintbrush. Yes. He's smart as fuck. Yeah. He be telling you shit like... I really don't need to know how, uh, you know, how the sun go around the earth. I, I really don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> but well, his son is so smart that I told him once, I said, my son was so dumb. I wish he had all this. <laughs> my son is so fucking dumb. They they diagnosed him with short-term memory loss. They said, <laughs> <laughs> he forgot he was playing basketball halfway through the game. <laughs> no, I tried to get a social security check for him, So and I thought something wrong. They said, no, he would store everything in his short-term memory. So they said, I thought he was autistic. They said, nothing is wrong with him. He's lazy. He literally <laughs> got diagnosed with being lazy as fuck. And they told me he put everything in short-term memory, except his video game. Ah. Uh, and he's still playing rent to this day. He's in his 30s. Yeah. The video games are a tricky one, because I do feel like it's like... It does make your brain, it does challenge your brain. It is kind of exercise for your brain, but I guess it depends on like which game it is. Which uh, game is he playing? I, I have no clue, <laughs> It's <man>. just <laughs> Mario 1. It depends on which one. Which one we got? I, I don't. I think he plays football. <laughs> I, I don't fucking know. Because oh, he's, you know, he's married. He got kids and shit. So I, I don't know. What do you feel like is the biggest mistake parents make with their kids? Besides giving them too much accolades when they're not good at something. Uh, I mean, just being honest with them. Yep. Just being honest, you know. We, we, you know, like I was just telling somebody, I said the biggest lie we tell to kids, the birds and the bees, you know, when they want to talk about sex, can't no bird fuck no bee. 
<laughs> so who the fuck came up with this dumbass analogy? So I know. So I told my kids. I said, "Look, I'm not gonna knock you." And also, you. birds lay eggs. But a bee will flop his ass. <laughs> 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 like ne neither of them have sex anywhere you, close to ours. Yeah, bees gotta have the smallest dicks in the world because they only so big. <laughs> I mean, it might be a big dick in the bee community. I mean, but <laughs> I mean, I do like that they worship a queen. Like that's going into positive direction. Yeah, but, but but she fucks everybody. She's the only fan. Yeah, the, if you're telling kids to have sex the way bees have sex, you're saying like 50 dudes should gangbang one queen. Yes. And then eat each other's puke. That's I guess. what money is, right? I, I guess, but I mean, just be honest with them. I told my kids, I said, I'm not going to tell you not to get no dick because dick is delicious when it's the right dick. What I'm going to tell you is to protect yourself because you can get some shit out here that'll put fucking moles on your vagina and look like raisins. That's right. You know, so just protect yourself. I'm, I mean, when you feel like you want some dick, go get it. But... And I told my oldest daughter, who just, I must have turned out because she gay as fuck. So she, she was totally opposite. I didn't have a gay conversation with her because I didn't know what to say. Go eat pussy because I don't eat pussy. So I was tr <laughs> technically trying to tell her, suck a dick, it's okay. But she took opposite advice. <laughs> well, if you told her if she sucked a dick, she was going to get raises on her pussy. I probably would never want to be around the dick again either. I'm just like, I'm gay, it turns out. I'd rather just lick a giant raisin. <laughs> what? Damn, that's what that's where I went wrong at. <laughs> so I mean, I'm just all, and my kids tell me. I, I'm sometimes I wonder, do I hurt their feelings now because I'm so blunt? Yeah. But I tell if them, you I say, don't, the world's gonna. Well, yeah, and I tell them all the time. I say I'm just preparing you how the world's gonna treat you. But I love you, so I'm doing it so you can be strong and you can understand. I mean, I'm just not. I'm never gonna. Beat around the bush. I'm 51. When it, when it, I fart in public. I don't give a fuck. You know, I'm at that point. You know, at one point you will hold your gas. Nigga, I got to fart. Move. <laughs> and it really don't stink because my ass is big. So As I time think, does. Yeah, like, it's got time to die loop before it get all the way to the end of my ass. So you really don't smell. Them. You just hear loud at what the fuck. But it's a power just, move. Yeah. That's I'm a just, flex. I'm at the point where I I I'm just being honest. Do you see the way that your kids are with their kids? And does it only one of my kids have kids? Oh, okay. He, no, my son. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no. You know, I try to tell my son, but you know, the new age kids are so different, and I'm old school. Yeah. I have a nine-year-old grandbaby that has a cell phone that I keep telling her, I say, do y'all realize what you giving her? You might yeah. want to give her a fucking gun. Mm -hmm. I said, you know, she like she got in trouble for, she went, you bitch ass, hoe ass bitch. And I was like, what? So I'm like, take the fucking phone. Yeah. The only, I think the thing that phones are good for, if you're going to give them at that age, is to give them something you can punish them with because they're so addicted to it. You can actually. Well, I have, I have custody of my niece kids and they don't have phone. And I have two ninth graders. I said, let me tell you something. You had to do like we did. If you get kidnapped, scream, motherfucker. Because, <laughs> I mean, if you die on me while he got you, well, it ain't like I can get to you. That's everyone's, what everybody says. They're like, no, we have it so we know where they are. It's like, but they also, that's the same device where other people can find out where they are and no. where they can get catfished by some weirdo who can text And they them. don't give a fuck about us. So when you give them a phone, you say, well, I'm going to turn on your location. Guess what? They turn their location off because uh, they don't want you in their fucking business. Yep. So you're not getting a phone. You get a phone when you can pay for your own phone. That's it. Exactly. That's the rule. Yeah. So my, I have a kid at the house who stole my money, like sixteen hundred dollars, and um, um, I didn't even realize he stole. He stole it from my husband. The teacher comes and said, "Oh my God, he has such a large amount of money." And I said, "Well, he do work." And she said, "No, not like this." So. My grandbaby takes a picture of the money. Him out there playing like he from the hood. And Ooh. put it on fucking Instagram. Ooh. I don't even know it till somebody else's child tells me. Oh, I wanted to beat her ass. So I tell him, I say, take this fucking phone. I say, because what's going to happen when somebody trick her like they're her friend mm. and she get in a car with him and you don't ever see him again? That's right. But they're, uh, uh, I said, she don't need a fucking phone. She's nine. She don't pay no bills. Mm -mm. She don't even know how to wash her ass good enough. Mm -hmm. So why does she have a phone? Yeah. Unless you're doing business, unless you're rolling calls. There, what is there to do? I, I still, like, if I had a cell phone when I was 13, so many people would be dead. 
What? I would. I mean, I would go to pay. I would cause trouble from pay phones. Do you know what oh, I mean? Oh, you wanted them off. Yeah, and that took thirty minutes. You'd have to get the quarter. You'd put it in. It was, well, well, I had a pager. I got. I did a lot of damage with a pager, even, which was just like it would just text the phone number, and you would just yeah. call it back. I'm like, I can't even imagine <sighs> the dumb, the number of dumb things that didn't happen just because it took too long to make the phone call or I didn't have a quarter, probably saved my life a thousand times. You know, the idea that you could just press. So you didn't you didn't know anything about dialing zero and say my call dropped and they put you through to the phone Shit. number? Shit. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> so back in the day when you didn't have that quarter to make that phone call, you would message zero on the phone and say, I was just on the phone call. My phone dropped. They was like, oh, let me connect you. Shit, no. For free. Nobody ever paid the fucking phone booth. I mean, I see people, I was with someone the other day whose daughter who was 11 was calling her mom by her first name. Oh, hell to the motherfucker. No, no, no. No, no. She was like, Erica, Erica. And I was like, why are you responding? I can't understand how you could respond to this and be okay with this. I would be like, you live outside now. No, I was like, what is, like my kids will talk and they'll be like, yes. I said, excuse you? Yes, ma'am. No, you would never call me Patricia. I don't even like Patricia. She's old as fuck. You're never gonna call me Pat. And if you and if somebody asks you what's my name, you would say my mama name is uh, Patricia. Uh huh. You better never say Patricia. But also, I if I didn't say yes sir, yes ma'am, I got slapped upside the head, is what we called it. And I still say yes sir and yes ma'am today. Living in, I think this is just a fucking stupid California thing. I say yes sir, yes ma'am. And people are like, oh sir, like I'm like they get offended by sir and ma'am. Nobody wants to get old anymore. That's the fucking it's problem. It's like I respect don't, you. Don't I'm, yes ma'am me. Yeah. You can't yes. I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you. You cannot yes man white women. They don't fucking like can't it. Can't handle you, it. You. They cannot fucking. Have, now black women, it's a form of respect. Yes, ma'am. I'm not that old, bitch. It's respect. Uh huh. You so used to not being talked to right. I can't even respect you. That's yes, ma'am. Oh my god. I'm only thirty five. Well, bitch, you're white. You look a little older, but I'm trying to respect you. You let your white daughter call you by your first name, but I can't call you ma'am? What does that say about you? You know, ain't nobody calling me. But that's that's just, that's cultural difference. Mm. Because, I mean, I would, it used to be cultural difference. These black bitches these days the same way probably, mm. a lot of them. But you're not, you're not going to, I'm 51. Don't try me. Mm -mm. I tell them, don't try me. Try Jesus because he got more patience and he give them more, he give, he loves you mm. way more than, <laughs> than I do. He came in and died for you. I wouldn't die for any of you motherfuckers. <laughs> so... I've been sleeping on the Blissey pillowcase. And let me just tell you, look at me. I look amazing, okay? I did not know that a pillowcase could feel so good and make such a big difference in my life. No one told me this. They told me, take sleeping pills, do this, hang upside down, blah. No one told me about this. I mean, do you do you ever struggle to find the cool side of the pillow? Like you have to flip the pillow all the time to try to get the, it's like it's all hot and swampy. Not with Blissey. Blissey silk pillowcases are temperature regulating and have naturally insulating properties so that if you sweat and overheat when you sleep, Blissey handles it, okay? Blissey fixes all that drama. On top of that, it also is so good for your hair. It reduces frizz, tangles, and prevents hair breakage. It keeps the moisture in your hair and keeps your skincare products and natural moisture in your skin because the silk does not absorb the moisture off your face, okay? It's not gonna be leaching the youth from your face. You can say goodbye to wrinkles. Adios, dry, flaky, and red skin in the morning and wake up with healthier hair. It's time to upgrade your sleep with Blissey's award-winning 100% Mulberry Silk pillowcases. The holidays are, they truly are right around the corner. It's horrifying. And if you're looking for the best gift you can give, look no further than a Blissey Silk pillowcase. Silk is honestly it is the most luxurious gift you can give your friends and family. I This is the silk blissy eye cover, like the sleep eye cover. I do not go anywhere without it. It's truly my favorite thing. It's on my forehead right now. Look how soft this is. Look at this. Look at this. Can't sleep without it. These are the perfect gifts for any occasion. Plus, it comes in gift-ready packaging. They're sure to love. Oh, what doesn't blissy handle? Give yourself the gift of Blissey today and you'll want one for every room in the house. Blissey silk pillowcases are the best pillowcases on the market, hands down. They have a ton of different prints and colors and they make great gifts because there's an option for literally anyone. Men love them too. Don't believe they love silk 
Silky Silk, you know where. They have over 1.5 million raving fans, and you could be next. Try now, risk-free for 60 nights, and get an additional 30% off. That's blissy, B-L-I-S-S-Y dot com slash Whitney to get an additional 30% off. Give yourself the gift of a good night's sleep with Blissey. I, I remember, like, my parents weren't around a lot. Like, I, I didn't have a lot of discipline. And it's like, I think people forget, like, Kids want discipline. They want walls. Like they're going to make a fuss, but they're just constantly testing you. They're testing you. My mom w- wasn't really around. My parents were divorced, whatever. We turned into a couple of punks. Like we're on the street. We're stealing money, doing all that kind of shit, stealing from, you know, my mom. I stole money out of my mom's purse and I can't, you know, she was dating, you know, trying to move on, dating other men. And I was like, you know, I was like, just, I didn't understand. And um, I was mad. I had all this anger or whatever. So she had gone on a date. I took money out of her purse when she was on a date. The next day, she said, do you take my money? And I said, I'm 11 years old. I said, um, uh, well, you're just going to make it back any- anyway because you're just a fucking hooker. And she hit me so hard. Hit an open hand across the face. She should have She should have hit you with black Jesus in mind. <laughs> Keep going. Hit me. I... I I remember it because I, I remember it because the first thought I had was, thank God she finally did it. Like she finally stood up to me, you know, like she like that's love. Like it was the first time I felt love from her. I wasn't mad at her. I was like grateful. I remember she hit me. I was like falling. It was like between a bed and a wall. And I remember falling and going like, I have a mom. Like I have someone who can protect. I have someone who's going to make sure that I don't screw my life up basically you know like it was a relief to me i wasn't mad at her and that was it and like from then on like wasn't shitty to her we had like a pretty good relationship mm. and it was like she finally <clears throat> just stood up to me and like because i mean because the divorce and everything everyone was like so scared to you know i think stand up to us as like kids you know but it's like we lived in dc if she hadn't done it someone else i would have said that to someone else you got your ass beat. Correct. Beat. Correct. Yes. So I remember just like knowing in that moment, like in my cells, like she probably just saved my life or probably just saved me from like a really rough ER visit because I was going to like be running my mouth at the wrong place and say some shit like that. Like I needed to be humbled. I needed someone to just fucking discipline me and no one would do it. Well, <clears throat> that's the difference growing up black because my mom used to always say, bitch, try me. And we know not to say a damn thing. Mm-hmm. So I didn't need all those ass whooping I got. I didn't need that to let me know I had a mama. Mm-hmm. She let me know she was a fucking mama. <laughs> I mean, the, the kids want that. They want discipline. They want to know, like, yes. like, if you can stand up to me, you can stand up for me. You know, it's just respect. You know, you're going to respect me. I'm your mother and I'm going to take care of you. And you're going to respect me and you're going to respect anybody else that's older than you. You're going to respect your third cousin who was born the same month as you three hours early. (laughs) Because I said so. (laughs) And that's how it should be. But kids today, you know, it's a lot of friendship instead of just, you know, people stepping out and being old school parents. Oh, my God, it's going to traumatize them. Oh, my God, you shouldn't say that. Well, why not? It made you a better person. That's right. Like, why are we protecting kids? They're going to hit... Society is so sensitive. So When I'm 51, when I was in school, they whooped your ass. The principal whooped your ass. And you act up, take your ass down out of Mr. Patterson because he's going to pat your ass with that fucking paddle. But they took all of that out. And people are like, oh my God, when they took Jesus out of school, the world went to shit. No, when they took this one out of school. Look at these kids today who stand up and whoop on teachers. We wouldn't have... The most we would have did was it. That's the most. And your mama got called and you got popped in your fucking cheek. <laughs> but now they standing up and I saw a girl hit a teacher upside the head the other day. Oof. Another girl jumped on the teacher. Well, you seen the teacher fight where the teacher didn't have on no underwear that then she whooped her motherfucking ass. <laughs> so they just have no respect. That's but right. if, but all of that starts at home also. Mm-hmm. So if they're not getting discipline at the house, they're definitely not going to come to school with that type of discipline. But also you think like social media, like it's like Mike Tyson said, the problem today is that people can talk shit and they don't get punched in the face yes like, kids are on social media they're seeing people talk shit talk shit talk shit and they're on these like live video games where you can talk shit with the people you're playing video games with and they just think they can talk shit like that to anybody you yeah. know so it's like this tricky thing where it's like uh like i don't know it's like social media is like like when people are like oh it makes you uh, you know body dysmorphic and like th- we had that before social media yeah you I mean, know what i mean like it's that's the thing that i feel like is really it like well people do shit to be popular like and I, i'm just being honest i've never heard the word anorexic when i was coming up first of all we was on food stamp if you threw up my mama food she would beat your motherfucking <laughs> ass i don't care if it was bad you better swallow it you better swallow it and if you want to work it off you better take 
shake your ass around that block and walk. But just throwing up her food stamp, we done waited 30 days for, you would get a fuck. My mom would beat these shit out of you. So, you know, and, and back in those days, nobody, nobody really looked at you for how you look. All you had to do was have a pretty face. You could be mm. a fat girl, and you was just as long as you was pretty. But now, you know, they set these standards. You're supposed to be thin. You're supposed to be a certain way, you know, because everybody can be a model, and everybody can be on Instagram, and it gives false sense of reality. Mm -hmm. Then when you really meet these motherfuckers without them uh, filter, that filter done shaped these bitches. They look like motherfucking Mike Tyson. Like they've been, like Mike Tyson punched them in the face. You're like, bitch, this was not you. <laughs> We don't, we don't, we too scared at, um, as America, as, as women to take a picture without a fucking filter. And I'm one of them. You know, you, I am a little oily, oily here. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I don't give a fuck. Like I do my podcast, my wig be slide. <laughs> I'm not dressing up for you motherfuckers to talk to you. <laughs> I'm not doing that shit. This is a lot of makeup I got on today. I had to wash my ass. If I'm at the house doing my podcast, I'm going to throw on a hat. Let's get this shit done. Somebody say, how can you go on your podcast? How can you click me the fuck off your computer? Because I don't give a fuck about you. You better leave me the fuck alone. You either listen or you here to see what I look like. You see me with makeup. Google, motherfucker. As I'm out there with makeup, with a little makeup, heavy makeup, and without makeup. You choose the Miss Pat you want a motherfucking like. But what I'm not going to do is dress up for you motherfuckers. Because I'm fat. I got to lift my stomach. I got to shave my thighs. Yeah, I'm going to hell. That was like, it is so true. I sometimes wish I just did like an audio only podcast. Remember during the pandemic, I had like all those different color hair. Mm -hmm. And when you, no one tells you when you bleach your hair and make it blue or purple or whatever, everyone already thinks you're a drug addict, but I didn't brush it. Like I didn't put the oil on it. Like it just would get dry and I just look like, you know, like French fries were coming out of my head. And it was just like, she's on drugs. She's, on, I'm like, I'm not going to curl my hair every day because that's going to make the hair drier and break even more. I'm like, who am I even doing this for? Like, I don't even... Like, no, any, but I do think that, like, podcast, like, we signed up to be comedians at a time where you would tour all year, once a year, maybe once every two years, you would be seen and shoot a special. You would maybe do The Tonight Show, you would do this. Now it's like every week we're on camera for like three hours, and it's just like, like not me. I don't get made up for them. I don't give a fuck. There'll be days I sit there and I don't know bras or no panties. I don't care. <laughs> I, but I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna do my podcast because I don't do it for them. I do it for me. I like talking. Mm -hmm. Now I do like the interaction with my fans. I just had a, a big party called Miss Pat Fan Celebration that I do once a year in Atlanta, and they come from all around the world. But they know me. Mm -hmm. I, I call them, you know, I call them my crack babies. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't have time for that. I've learned a long time ago. I, it's about me. You got to make yourself happy. That's it. Because I'm not gonna live for you. Because if I live for you, I'm gonna die for me. I'm, I'm gonna die. So it's That's about so me. Fuck everybody else. What have you learned like in like, you know, your show is about to go into another season? Yeah. Fourth, se fourth season of the Miss Pet so Show. So insane. Like, have there been any like learning curves as far as like being a boss, being a leader um, or as parenting? It's pretty similar to parenting. <laughs> I feel well, like. one of the things I learned with working with a network, you know, Everybody don't have your vision. Mm -hmm. Even though they give you these deals, they always got people behind the scene that see something different. You know, and th that's one of the biggest things I had to work work with and work through and say, "Hey, I know funny. You know corporate, I know funny. I got here because I was funny. Mm -hmm. I didn't get here because what you have in mind. Mm -hmm. I got here because of what I have in mind." So, just to be able to tell, you know, and I love working with BET because they black, they understand. It took them a minute to understand me. But they're like, we don't do this for talent. I was like, well, I'm, I'm not talent. We, 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 we're co-workers. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, if, if this worked for me, it works for you. So we all in this together. So just mainly to get the network to listen. To, and, and support your idea to give it a try. Mm -hmm. Like, because I have a show that had never been done. We're cussing in a sitcom, a multicam. You know. I mean, we're talking, and people really love that. This is the first time a mother like me ever had a voice on national TV. And and people are like, this this shit is crazy. Yeah. But it's so many mispats out there. That's right. And the subject that the BET and Viacom allow us to do is real edgy. Like I did my mama boyfriend molesting me. Um, I did my kid's father molesting me, how he treated me, being shot. I tell it all. But it's also, if something like this happened to us, why is it too edgy for TV? 
I it's had, reality. I had to live through it. Yeah. So it's like this. So, so, well, oh, but that's called, too upsetting to people. Yeah. I had to live through it. It's sponsors. Todd don't want to hear you got fucked with a deal, though. They trying to get, they trying to get you to wash your clothes, not cry. We use Tide to wash the blood off. <laughs> and it worked great. No blood stains in my panties. Ty, we need a commercial. <laughs> we need a commercial, Ty. It washed my uncle's fingerprints right off my panties. Yes. <laughs> it happened, you guys. I'm pregnant. I know. I know. I, I froze my eggs. I talked about that a lot in my HBO special. Everyone thinks I like had sex with a Tesla or something. I got pregnant. Naturally, I know it happened. I'm gonna be a mom. I am very excited to find out the sex of my baby. I'm using Sneak Peek, it is a super convenient at home way to find out really early. See, I want. I want to know the sex of my kid. I, I know people are like, I want to be surprised. I feel like there are gonna be enough surprises on the day I give birth to this tiny little vampire. I want to reduce the number of surprises in the labor and delivery emergency room as I struggle to not die in childbirth. <laughs> Their founder, Chris, developed this product because he and his wife, they wanted to stop calling the baby it, which I think is kind of funny. It makes me think of the clown in the sewer, like a little baby in the... In the, in the <laughs> and Chris and his wife, they wanted to connect with the baby earlier instead of waiting for 20 weeks. Okay, well, they have a much less shallow reason <laughs> than I do, but Sneak Peek is the only at home baby sex test that lets you know boy or girl as early as six weeks into pregnancy, months earlier than an ultrasound. Results are 99.9% .9 accurate and clinically proven. Everything you need is packaged in this compact box. This test is trusted by over 1 million moms and OBGYNs. Mail it back in the prepaid package and get results on the same day that your sample arrives at the sneak peek labs. Right now, Sneak Peek is offering my listeners up to $20 off. Just go to sneakpeaktest.com and use my code Whitney to save up to $20 today. That's sneakpeaktest.com. Sneak, S-N-E-A-K, peak, P-E-E-K, test, T-E-S-T, dot com and save $20 today. All right, let's gender this baby. This is super easy. First, you're gonna drink eight ounces of water 20 minutes before to help the blood flow, right? Then you're gonna remove the adhesive on the snap and stick it on, and it doesn't hurt at all. That's crazy. All right, it's working. See, guys, I'm human. Look at that. Red blood coming out. So when this is done, I'm gonna take the vial out. I'm gonna snap the cap on top of the vial. I'm gonna put it inside this little baggie, and then we put it back in the box with the shipping label and presto mailo. Now I'm ready to send this off to sneak peek and I'm gonna get my results on the sex of my baby. The day it hits the laboratory. Give it to the stork. I remember when I wrote my first book and uh, people was like, oh, you gotta take that out. It's just so, it, it, it's, it's gonna make people cry. Well, I want people to feel what I felt. Good. I don't, don't water me down. And I argue you too. I'm not gonna fucking do it. I don't need your money. I'm, you're not gonna make me this fat bitch that's in your head. Cause I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm a person where I come with scars and bruises and kicks and and roll down hills. Let me show you my motherfucking healing. And that's what I like about BET. But I've argued. I've had to argue off off a nally, um, where uh, the daddy grabs me and we get we kind of like a fight. And the, some of the women in the network really love how we created Terry on the show as as this such supportive husband. You know, he supports his wife's career. He takes care of the kids and everything. Well, I get an abortion and I don't tell him. Mm -hmm. Well, I told him it was my decision. And at 50, I could be risking my life. Yeah. And they, they was already etchy with the fucking episode. But he grabs me because I got an abortion and he asked me not to. And he was like, oh my God, he can't grab you. And I remember looking at the camera and saying, leave me the fuck alone. I know how to get beat. Mm. And it blew the fuck up. It blew. I mean, it split the audience. How dare she? And then women was like, I understand her. I can't believe Terry put his fucking hands on her. They were so invested in that episode. Because if that episode weren't in you, you if, if you, if that episode didn't represent you, you knew people who had gone through that. Mm -hmm. And that's why I wrote that episode, because it was me. And I also knew people who had gone through that. 
And it was just so true to reality and people loved it. And that's like what art and television does at its best. Like that's what we do at our best is we show people, even if you haven't been through this, other people have mm -hmm. and you don't get to just look away, you know, yes. and it's going to be funny, funny, funny. And then it's going to break your heart and then you can't look away and you have to um, step into somebody else's shoes for a second. You have to feel someone else's feelings for a second. But what's happening in Hollywood right now is everyone's so afraid to make anyone uncomfortable or trigger anybody or upset anybody that it's making bad television. It's making bad art. It's making not funny art that doesn't, it's supposed to change you forever. That's yes. what it's supposed to do. Yes. And, and and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna make that kind of TV. No. I, I don't know how to make that kind no. of TV. Cause it, no matter what I create, it's always gonna be some type of reality in it. It's gotta be real. It's gotta be real to the people who sitting there and say, Oh my God, that's mm -hmm. me. That's all I hear when I go on the road. Mom is Pat, you everybody say I'm you, or you my mama, you my aunt. Oh my God, you was talking to me with this episode, or you was, mm -hmm. you know. It's for the people. Yeah. And if, if they're not interested, they're not gonna watch the shit. And it's also like part of like, like for me, it's like if I didn't have like the whatever trauma that I've had and the abuse that I've had, I would just be a crazy entitled bitch. <laughs> yes. But if we have the context of what I come from, you're like, oh, this is so triumphant that she's confident and has a voice and can speak up for herself and can use laughter to cope. Yeah. Whereas if I was just from like a fancy house in Connecticut, I would just be an annoying asshole. <laughs> so, Nobody would like you. No. <laughs> and, and, and only I would say, this bitch, please. Where did you come from? <laughs> You know, it's not reality. I don't want to hang out with somebody like that mm -mm. who ain't got no feeling, who's been handed everything, don't even know it. And it's nothing wrong with, I don't care how rich you are. I just want you to be aware that everybody don't have what you have. Yeah. You know, you can't, you just can't, you know, even with the little money I got now, I just can't say, hey, y'all, let's go on vacation. They're like, bitch, we got a job. Yeah. Well, so do I, but we don't get paid the same. Yep. And so I tell my friends, hey, y'all, y'all want to go on Disney Cruise? We got one year to pay for this bitch. Mm -hmm. We're going to make our payments at the same time. Mm -hmm. And that's what I still do to, to this day. Because everybody money ain't the same. That's right. And and I have not changed. I still hang out with the same people. Yep. But I know that what I make is totally different from what, what my friends make. My retired girlfriends, my friends with grandkids. Mm -hmm. So I don't come and say, I'm going to Disney. Y'all ready? I said, no. -uh. I said, I want y'all to experience something. But we're going to put this motherfucker on level. We're going to break these payments down. Mm -hmm. And that's what we do. And that's so tricky because I've, I mean, I like people think that I've like all oh, this money. I've spent most of my money on my family and I don't regret it. It was, you know, both my parents had strokes like 10 years ago without health insurance. Like I, I mean, in America, I see you if you don't have health insurance is $60,000 a day. And I like, I was just, I mean, I was doing casinos to try to pay for nursing homes and hospital, you know, it was just like both my parents, like caretakers, like, you know, it's a nightmare. And, um, and so you know, I mean, the universe, I feel like if, if I had gotten to keep any of that money, I probably would have done something stupid with it or who knows, like maybe I'd be, you know, died of fentanyl by now or something. So I was just like, try to be grateful and go, God, But whatever. you know, you could also, it's America. These are doctor bills. You could have walked away from You know, I. <laughs> you could have got Medicaid, Medicare. You can always pay broke. You I mean, they didn't have your income. <sighs> See, Wendy, that's when you have to call me for See, the reality of what's really going on, how to get away. You just being white and paying your fucking bills. <laughs> you got to stop that shit. That's what we pay our taxes I am for. So dumb, like honestly. I no, was like, you just don't. You don't call your black friend enough. Call me, Miss Pat. What would Negroes do? <laughs> don't say that. <laughs> I had my credit was so bad at that point. Byron Allen helped me fix my credit. I finally got to a point where I could rent an apartment, lease a car, and then these bills started hitting me, and it was just like crushing me. And um, yeah, I'm an idiot and I paid for it all. But I'm like now at a point, and I was talking to Leslie Jones about this yesterday. We were trying to, I was just like, what's like, cause I want to share with every, like when I, I know what it's like to be in debt. It's the worst. When I see a friend who's like struggling and has credit card debt or something, like I just want to pay it off so bad. And like I have before, sometimes it works, but there's other times or in like they're truly feel better. Grateful doesn't toxify the relationship. But I remember Chris Rock said to me once, like um, he was like, when you, loan someone money, it's only a matter of time before they start to hate you. Because mm. there have been so many friendships where I'll just be like, oh, no, I got that. Or like, I'll cover that. Or like, you know, your kid wants to do this thing and you can't afford it. Like, let me just let me just get it for you. I'll, mm -hmm. I'll try to go like, oh, it'll be like an early Christmas gift. Or like, oh, you know what? I won't get you a wedding gift. I'll just like do this. And then the relationship starts to get weird. And then now I feel like I have a power over you that I don't want to have. And like now... You know what I mean? Like it's like, do you have a protocol for that? Yeah, I do. I do jokes, and my joke is, uh, 
I didn't give you none of my crack money. I didn't give you none of my uh, my check forging money. You ain't getting none of my motherfucking TV money. <laughs> so I do that bit every night. <laughs> yeah, I mean you can't save the world. Yeah. Like you, you, I have friends out there, you know, and they're struggling or whatever. If I can help, I can help. Mm. But I'm not gonna say, oh, let me get that for you. Mm. No, I'm not gonna. That's life, mm. you know. And my friends don't expect me to do that. I always learn, don't start nothing that you don't want to keep up. Yeah. That's why I don't walk right now. Try to walk. Yeah. Just just like walk. Exercising. Yeah. Yeah. Treadmill. Because then you'd have yeah. to finish have, the walk. No, I have to do it every fucking day. <laughs> <laughs> so you just don't start nothing in this world that you don't want to keep up. <laughs> right now, exercising me is arguing like a motherfucker. And I need it. I'm a plump bitch right now. <laughs> So, you know, and, and I just tell her, I'm not loaning you money. I'm not Bank of America. I, I don't mm -hmm. have it to loan. You know, my husband is retired. We on a, we on a fucking fixed income. Yeah. You know, and I, I got bad habits. <laughs> <laughs> That's my main bad habit is like, uh, you know, because, yeah, is, is giving people or just trying to fix someone else's thing. And it's not. No. And it's also like. if you fix it, they're going to refuck it up. You're going to fix it again? That's exactly it. Huh? It's like That's plastic exactly surgery. It. You get it, eventually your cheek's going to fall. Titties. You buy them, eventually your titties going to fall. You're going to lift them back up. Or you gonna, you buy your friend titties, and you know she couldn't afford them fucking titties. When they fall in 20 years, are you going to be back there to pick up them titties? <laughs> so don't buy the bitch your titties. She couldn't afford the titties the first fucking no, those place. those things leak sometimes. Yeah, they leak. Yeah, you got to redo and, them. And she going to tell you, you bought me these titties, and they fucking leak, and you got to fix them. No, bitch. I didn't tell you to go around bumping niggas upside their head with the titties. <laughs> You, I didn't tell you. I told you not to go through the X-ray machine at the airport. What do they do? Yes, yes. So oh, no. <laughs> What's gonna happen to my tits? Should I be breastfeeding? Because I have fake I, ones. I don't know. I don't know. Work. My shit is real. So I, you gotta ask a bitch. You got those? Is that a baby? <laughs> now I can't answer everything. I, I can't tell you shit about no fake titties. Do they work? I th we'll see. I, well, don't I mean, know. when you, when somebody suck them, do you feel it? Like half. Well, that's kind of good because you know when baby, uh, when the baby breastfeed, they clamp down. They said that shit hurt. My my daughter, uh, clamped down on my titties when I the only child I ever tried to breastfeed. I said, Nah, bitch, this ain't for me. Uh, uh, mm -mm. that's the number one advice I'm getting. It's like don't try to be a hero and breastfeed. You do not have to. And you know, I I don't knock the moms who snatch their titties out and breastfeed everywhere because it's the, some of the most. I, I don't even. Let me just say this. <laughs> I don't even know how it's the most fucking the most healthiest milk that a child can get when when I've seen bitches who smoke weed and breastfeed. Uh -huh. My sister smoked crack and breastfeed. So you telling me getting that baby <laughs> high every day is more healthy than Similac? Mm -mm. A whole milk. So I don't. And what is this bitch eating? Is she just eating healthy? If she up here eating a Snicker bar, <laughs> you gonna tell me her breast milk is good? No, I'm not gonna sit there. And, and I mean, and more power to you if you breastfeed because it's, it's the right thing to do. But I'm busy. I drink and, LA water. It's yeah. just gonna be like fentanyl sludge. I eat anything. Yeah. I just did not have time. When I was having kids, I was a crack dealer. I can't fucking be breastfeeding no child with no razor blade and crack in my other hand because the crack get in your system. So I'm like, nah, this, this ain't for me. Just, and I don't want to be that. I, I'm not that kind of mama. Yeah. And it's also, it's just like, it's, you know. The, it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. And then when I say the benefits, are, but if you're stressed out, it undoes and the then benefits. You know the biggest lie they tell with breast Tell me. Oh, I hate these bitches. They say, oh my God, if you breastfeed, it's going to tighten your stomach back up. Should I get naked in here and show you my stomach 37 years later? <laughs> my shit never went back flat. <laughs> I said, you lying son of a bitch. I don't had this girl up here masculating me. Is that the right word? Masculating? <laughs> That's the wrong word. <laughs> What's Playing the... with my titties. <laughs> All this time, my fucking stomach go flat. I don't know what the word would be. Are you think, like... Are you talking about masticating, like the sounds you make? I don't fucking know. Yeah, it just popped out of my head. The Latin root of... I don't need... It's masculating the word. Masculate? Like, emasculate? No, I don't fucking know. Sometimes she just come out of my mouth. It don't make it. It's a power move. I kind of like it. It made me feel dumb. Masculate means the opposite of it. It means to make something more masculine. Yeah, she been making my titty strong for no reason. <laughs>
<laughs> so now I got one strong titty because she don't like the fucking opposite side. And then one of my titties just strong and long. Oh, the baby only wanted one side. Yes. And you know when they suck on your titty, they make your titty drag like dog nipples. You don't. <laughs> <laughs> Just t- one is an udder and one. Oh, oh, everybody I know breastfed got cricket titties. No. Hey, y'all. Did you know? Did you? That you didn't. That 35% of all fatal accidents occur between 6 p.m. and midnight. And maybe probably allegedly by a guy named Kyle. I made that last part up. Do you know people aged 25 to 34 have the highest amount of drivers involved in car accidents? Y'all out there trying to get your Pokemon Go on? What are you doing? And people aged 15 to 24 had the highest rate of emergency room visits due to car accidents of all age groups. Ah, you guys, tisk tisk. And did you know, this weekend I was in Maine. We had to drive from Canada to a small town in Maine in the pouring rain. And did you know that I died? When I tell you, we saw four accidents on the side of the road that did not look like they ended well for anyone, okay? They weren't meet cutes where someone met their husband or anything like that. I was was shocked, okay? Did I yell out the window, hey, Morgan and Morgan, promo code Whitney? I sure did. And I got a thumbs up from a dead guy. Morgan and Morgan is American. (laughs) Morgan & Morgan is America's largest injury law firm. They have over 100 offices nationwide and more than 800 lawyers. With over $15 billion, that's with a B, guys, with over $15 billion recovered for over 300,000 clients, Morgan & Morgan has a proven track record of fighting to get you full and fair compensation. Morgan & Morgan has been fighting for the people for over 35 years. Submitting an injury claim with Morgan & Morgan is so easy. Look, being a woman in Hollywood is hard. Submitting an injury claim with Morgan & Morgan is easy. If you're ever injured, you can check out Morgan & Morgan. Their fee is free unless they win. For more information, go to forthepeople.com slash Whitney or dial pound law, pound 529 from your cell phone. That's for F-O-R, the people, dot com slash Whitney or pound law, pound 529 from your cell phone. This is a paid advertisement. Yeah, I was fighting with someone about this the other day because, like, there are different Souths, you know? Like, I was in a fight with someone about, like, do you keep your butter in the fridge or out? In the fridge. That's psychotic to me. What? Why would you keep butter in the fridge? Because then you got to get, you can't spread it. Where I'm from in the South, I would get my ass beat if we put the butter in the fridge. You got to keep the butter out in a butter dish out on the table. That shit nasty. But then you but you got a top on it. But then how are you gonna you got your toast, you got your something, how's it gonna well, melt? Who the, the butter? fuck just eat butter like that? <laughs> Us. <laughs> you eat butter at every meal. You butter some. It no, we don't. Bread when it's Do, cold. When you that's what I'm saying. Yeah. If you take yeah, butter you in the take fridge, butter and you you uh you, you if you're gonna use it that day, you'll set it out. But we uh, no, we don't set and uh, what no, we don't say We have butter ready at all times. No, we don't butter ready at all times. That's why y'all insisting. <laughs> the E. coli from the butter yeah, that's been yeah. left out. Yeah. I love trying to like figure out these like- Flies like, and bugs. Yeah, and... but you got a dish on top. It's like a good butter a dish. <laughs> a, a, a ant is small. That motherfucker could fit in anything. <laughs> you ever been to the bathroom and ants fell out of you? Like, where the fuck <laughs> the ants come from? <laughs> they enter. You don't even know they in you. It's the parasites from the, the, the table butter. butter. Yes. <laughs> Oh. And also just like from a very early age, I was like so paranoid because like when you grow up in the South, like there's there nothing in the fridge is what you think it is. Like you open the Lando Lakes yeah. and it's just like a couple <laughs> chicken wings. Yeah, because yeah. we use the we use our butter, our, our country crock, like every carton has some other shit. And we didn't have no fucking country crock. Now, that was, now I wouldn't eat it today, but that's a little fancy shit. We had that thick shit where it didn't have, you said butter. <laughs> it didn't even tell, it had no ingredient on butter. Try it. <laughs> butter try me yes <laughs> so are you already um thinking of stuff for season four like do you kind of already go in with an idea oh we was writing you're already uh, we was writing for the before the strike it so we're ready for season four because it's gonna be coming out like election 2024 or to you, election 2025, because uh, you're in 2024 already. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I hope we can get back to work soon. So, you know, we can, it's probably going to be a quick turnaround yeah. because, you know, we we should have been out by now. Mm. We should have been at least, we should be in last editing by now. But, you know, it is what it is. We'll see what happens. And hopefully when all of this is resol- resolved, we can get some residuals and shit. Yep. 
You think we're gonna get a residual check? No. It's tricky. Like, you know, I mean, I think this this the business has been broken for a really long time. There's just too many people working on every show. You know, it used to be like the amount of money that these networks were able to command when there were only three, four networks, it's still based on that, you know. Bounty Pampers, they could only advertise on three channels. Now that there's you know, 15 channels, there's 5,000 podcasts, you know, everyone's making less money, you know, and then these networks still have 10 executives working on each show, 10 people in the, you know, promo department, 10 people in human resources, trying to make sure that you don't say what you're saying in the room that you're going to say, it. you know what I mean? It's just like, I'm not saying fire people, but it's just like, as long as this business is going to stay so inflated and have to, you know, when you go on your sitcom, there's 200 people there who's paying for all, you know, it's, it's got to come from somewhere. You know, and unfortunately, it's like the person that's generating all of that. I be telling them, I get, I, give me 10 people. We can get, give me the give me the cast and, and somebody in Crafty to feed me. Mm. We don't need everybody. We, we'll, we'll position old cameras and run in front of and act it out and then that's turn right. the camera the next way if it's going to save us some money. It's tricky because then you're like, I don't want people to get fired. But it's like, no, and, the, and then unions are doing their job. It's like, there's got to be three people on this camera, three people on this camera, three people on, you know, there's like safety concerns, but you're kind of like seeing people on Instagram and TikTok making really high quality shows with just three people in their phone. And you're kind of like, oh, that's where those are the people making the real money because there's no overhead. You yeah. know, so it's like, it's just kind of this like untenable situation. But it's like, for me, I like to go like, do we really need 12 lawyers working on this? See, you know, when you get an email from someone and you're like, this is just 12 lawyers that are probably getting paid 400 grand a year to be, that are frankly slowing us down, that are being obstacles. Yeah. You know, why don't you just like, I would just go in and clean house and go, why don't you just have a lawyer on an hourly basis? If you do see that we need to license something, hire them for an hour, $500, instead of having them on retainer in the office that you're paying real estate for. Or like, guess what? Everyone, let all your employees work from home so that you're not paying, you know, for these offices in Century City or Beverly Hills. Like, where's all this money going? You know, someone's got to pay for all this shit. So it's just like, I don't know. I mean, Tyler Perry seems like he's kind of like cracked it a little bit, you know? Oh, he's been cracked it. That's why he, he, he do what he do. He does it all <laughs> himself. And then he just goes out and sells it. Cause he's like, I see the inefficiency here. Like I know how to make the money, but you guys are spending it on stuff. That's not making the show better. So let me just do it on my own and then I'll sell it to you. Byron Allen does the same thing. Yes. And they both really rich. Somebody doing something wrong. Yep. And it ain't Byron and it ain't Tyler. Mm -mm. <laughs> I'm letting you go because I know you have to go do um, Jennifer Hudson. Can we just, just put your tour something. dates up yes, really please. quick? So put your tour dates up. Um, I don't know how you're finding time to tour and have a show come out and write a show, but are you doing a bunch of cities? Yes. Minneapolis, yes. Dallas, Washington, D.C. Whoa. Philadelphia, San Antonio, Houston, Atlanta, Chicago, Cleveland, Madison, San Francisco, Portland, Boston, Oklahoma City. Yes. Memphis, Tennessee, Charlotte. This is all going to be starting October going through March 16th. Tickets yes, out. Minneapolis this weekend. Tickets available at misspatcomedy.com. I love you so much. Thank you. I, I love hope you I didn't too. keep you too long. No, you didn't. And I cannot wait to send uh, my ne my new nephew his oh, uh, Jordan. Name my baby. I can't think of a name. Huh? I can't think of a name. You want a king? A who? A king. King. No, don't name the baby king. No. Uh, well, I wanted to do Maximus, but my last name is Cummings. Maximus Cummings. Oh, he's not getting a daddy last name? No. Okay, uh, maximum comments. Okay, that sounds like I'm not a that bad at business. <laughs> a what? It sounds like a calm job. You know, like I know. don't the do last that. name is a tough pairing. <laughs> uh, Tyler, I like Tyler. Yeah, Tyler. I like Tyler Cummings. <laughs> Tyler's good. Tyler's. It's a little sorry. It's a little like Garrett is very Garrett. Right. I like Garrett. I have a Garrett. I love Garrett because I like Garrett. I like Garrett Grayson. Yeah. It's kind of cute. Um, if you like want to go black, uh, Devon. Okay. <laughs> Divine Cummings. <laughs> What's it, another black one? It settles. Lil Ray Ray? Lil Ray Ray Cummings. <laughs> Antoine. Antoine yeah, Cummings. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> There's a lot of black names I can give you. <laughs> Just send me all your birth certificates. I'll be okay. able to pull one. My son's name is Nakia. Don't do that one. <laughs> uh, I have a Garrett. Um, I'm trying to think. Rano. I feel like, I think boys are harder than girls, I feel like. Nobody really cares about boys' names. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm too honest. <laughs> Name that baby Tyler and keep it Nobody moving. Nobody cares. Not, but not Maximo. Maximo <laughs> coming. Maximum. Oh, he sounds like he's supposed to be on. Yeah. It, but we need to give kids adversity. I think you got to give him a little name that's going to, you know, make it hard no, for him you don't, the school because yard. Whatever he's going to be, he's going to change it anyway. That's so true. So, he's gonna, I live in California. He's going to change his gender by the time he's well, two. If he want to. <laughs> now, I, you can't change your gender if I got to buy you shit. 
that's, that's I ain't gonna be out here buying you no motherfucking Pokemons. <laughs> well, you know, no, you you gonna, well, I support you, but hey, mm-hmm. when you get a certain age, when you pay for your own shit, you can go full blown the fuck out. I, I said I grew up poor. When you grew up poor, you're whatever gender your older sibling was. Yes. Whatever hand-me-downs you got is what you got. That's right. And I, if I catch you in my lipstick and you ain't, it ain't right for you, I'm going to beat your ass. <laughs> and I think I just settled it. She's going to name that baby Tyler. <laughs> Miss Pat, I love you so Thank much. You. I'll see you soon. <laughs>